Aren't you glad that you're living in the blessings of God? The blessings of God. And it is so wonderful just to know, just to know. I don't have to wonder if I'm in his blessings. I know it. I don't, I don't have to try to figure it out. I know I'm in the blessings of God because he said it. God cannot lie. So once he has spoken it, it's done. That's all I need is for him to speak it. He is the king. In the kingdom, the king makes the laws by simply speaking. That's why the king in the Bible could say, I want you to kill every firstborn male. And it had to be done because he's king. No voting. So when God says, bless you, there's no voting. It's done. Don't need your mama's permission. Don't need your enemy's permission. That's why I think Jesus said, pray for your enemies. Because they think they, they're doing you harm. They're not doing you any harm. They're doing you good. If you didn't have enemies, I wouldn't be able to prepare a table. Because my word says I'll prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. In their face. Isn't God bold about it? I'm going to bless you in the presence of your enemies. I want them to see me bless you. That's the attitude God has. I want your enemies to see me bless you. He said, I will cause your enemies to be your footstool. Pray for your enemies to be strong. Strong. Pray for your enemies to not fail. Not fail? Yes. Your footstool is what you step on to reach something higher. I want my enemies strong. I want you vibrant. Lord, help my enemies in Jesus' name. If I got to stand on them to reach something higher, I don't want a leg broken. I don't want them to slip and fall. I want them strong in Jesus' name. Don't cry because somebody don't like you. Praise God. Say, Father, I thank you. Prophecy is being revealed. Prophecy is being revealed, and it is coming to pass right now. Because Jesus said, listen, they hated me, so they're going to hate you. Now, if the world loves you, uh uh-oh. Because if the world loves you, that means you are part of them. You got these people like Kirk Franklin trying to be a part of the world. Why y'all get get quiet? Because I called the boy name. You see people trying to be a part of the world, so the world will love them. I want the world to love them because the world got more money evidently than the church. Because the church, they, they like to do this uh, black market stuff. But the world, they'll legitimately download and buy my CD and my songs. See, I talk about y'all friends. See how you go? You know, when you talk about somebody's friend, they go to getting quiet. Well, you can tell the devil, I don't like him. And he will tell you, I don't like him either. How many of you the devil likes? You just do whatever he wants you to do. Say whatever he wants you to say. Go wherever he wants you to go. He just likes you. Demon say, you know, I like this person. They obey. It's quiet again. Okay, let me get to the word of God. I've already been in the word of God. Amen. Amen. God is good. We're going to go back to Proverbs 4, verse 7. Proverbs 4, verse 7 from last week. God is great. He's worthy to be praised. You know, I really feel like preaching. You ever, y'all preachers ever just feel like, yes, I just feel like preaching. Proverbs 4, 7, the Amplified Version says, the beginning of wisdom is, get wisdom, skillful and godly wisdom. For skillful and godly wisdom is the principal thing. Somebody say first thing. And with all you have gotten, get understanding, which is discernment, comprehension, and interpretation. I told you last week one reason why we are not to learn or to even lean concerning our own understanding is because people pray according to what they understand. You see a situation, money's needed, I don't have the money. Your understanding is just that. 
So people pray according to that. Father, I don't have the money for this, so this is the situation here. Now, in all of our getting, we are to get understanding from God. That way, we will only pray his will. We will pray according to the understanding he has. So how do you get understanding? How do you get understanding from God? No, you can't just say, Father, give me understanding. Ooh, I felt it. I got it. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. doesn't come like that. Before we find out how to get understanding, let's go to Romans. Romans chapter 1, verse 31. Romans 1, 31 says this. And let me explain a little bit for, for those of you who may be visiting why we use the Amplified Version. The King James Version, of course, was translated back in the year 1611 during the rule of King James. And uh, the translators, they would translate one word, let's say the word rejoice. They would translate it from the original Hebrew and just say rejoice, but there are different kinds of rejoicing. There's a rejoicing where you twirl. There is a rejoicing, which is a rejoicing of the heart, which there's no physical manifestation. So the Amplified Version takes a slew of words and really breaks those words down so we can understand the original intent of the Holy Spirit conveying the Lord's message to us. Therefore, Romans 1.31 says, they were without understanding. And if you're out of, without understanding, you're consciousless, faithless, heartless, and loveless, and merciless, simply because you don't have understanding. Now, the first word is they. Who are they? Let's go all the way back up to verse 20, Romans 1, 20. And we're going to examine this. Now, as we examine this, remember what we just read. They were without understanding. So let's look at this. Let's examine this so that we will not be guilty of it. Somebody say amen. amen. What does amen mean? So let it be. Amen doesn't mean, I agree with you, preacher. Amen means, Father, so let this be in my life. Romans 1.20, for ever since the creation of the world, his invisible nature and attributes, that is his eternal power and divinity, have been made intelligible and clearly discernible in and through the things that have been made. His handiworks. You can tell how awesome God is by what he has done. That is what this is saying. You can tell how awesome and glorious he is by his handiworks. The Bible even talks about the works of his fingers. In other words, the little fine-tuned details of the earth. God, I thank you. Now, so men are without excuse altogether, without any defense or justification. Verse 21. Oh, my, my, my. Because when they knew and recognized him as God, they did not honor and glorify him as God or give him thanks. But what did they do? But instead, they became futile and godless in their thinking with what? Vain imaginings, foolish reasoning, stupid speculations and their senseless minds were darkened can you imagine your mind already senseless and then it's darkened as well verse 22 what were they doing claiming to be wise they became fools professing to be smart what did they do they made simpletons of them Selves. You know, you can make yourself look simple. You can make yourself look so stupid. Do you know you can look stupid and really not be stupid? You can act stupid, 
But in actuality, you're not stupid. Vain imaginings. They knew and recognized him as God, but didn't glorify. Didn't honor him as God. Who's guilty of that? Oh, I know he is God, but yet you do what you want to do. You don't glorify. You don't honor him as God. And so your mind becomes senseless, darkened. Oh, I know he's God. I go to church every Sunday morning. That's all he gets. 24 times 7, 24 hours in a day, seven days a week. All he gets from you is about an hour or so on Sunday morning. How much of your time did he get yesterday? I mean, pastor, that's the weekend. No, oh, so God doesn't get time on Saturdays. Say, so, you know, Saturday is just my day. Ooh, we off Monday when it's a holiday coming up. Ooh, I'm just going, how much time does God get? Amen. Do you love God? Yes, I love God. Prove it. Yeah. If I took some people in the court of law, could I prove that you don't love God? How do you know you love God? Oh, it's just all bubbly up all in my heart. I just feels it. Love is not a feeling. For God so loved the world that he felt. The Bible says he gave. Love is not what you feel. Love is what you do. Hate isn't what you feel. Hate is what you do. Oh, I could go on and on. Let me just stop right now because I feel it stirring up in me. Now, we're going to go to verse 23. And by them the glory and majesty and excellence of the immortal God. Immortal meaning he has no humanistic qualities, no frailties whatsoever, no weakness that humans have. He is immortal. We are mortals. The majesty and excellence of the immortal God were exchanged for and represented by images resembling mortal man and birds and beasts and reptiles. You're going to literally take the immortal, invisible, holy God and represent him with an idol? Carve a piece of wood and say, we're going to worship this. This is God. The bird, we're going to worship this bird, this reptile, this will be God. My, 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 my. You let me go into church and they have something up there talking about it's God. Child, please, I'm out the door. Verse 24. What are we talking about this morning? What are we talking about? How to get understanding. How to get understanding. If you don't have understanding... All of this stuff will come upon you. Wisdom is the principal thing, but you got to get understanding. You can have wisdom and not understand how to apply it. A lot of wise people, or at least they think they're wise, as, as the Bible says. They think that they're wise, so they make themselves look stupid. Hmm, mm, mm, mm. So therefore, they have no understanding. Verse 24, therefore God gave them up in their lusts of their own hearts. Because of no understanding, God gave them up. In the lust of their own hearts to sexual impurity. Always, always, always know this. Please know this. If you're not Pleasing God, you are always pleasing self. Please know that. If God is not being pleased, you are. Therefore, God gave them up in the lust of their own hearts to sexual impurity of themselves. To what? The dishonoring of their bodies among themselves, abandoning them to the degrading power of sin. That's degrading. You, you, you sin, it's degrading. Oh my goodness, you are sinning? Oh my. 
How could you? They knew he was God, but didn't honor him as God. Didn't worship him as God. If you don't please me, God says, you will please yourselves. So I just give you over to that. You wonder why we have all this foolishness going on in the world? Because they know him as God, but they don't honor him and glorify him. Why do you do the things that you do? Because you don't understand, glorify, magnify God. He gets very little of your time, but you get the rest of it. Mm, 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 mm. All because of not understanding. Verse 25. Because they exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshiped and served the creature themselves rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen means what? So be it. When you don't worship God, you're worshiping yourself or somebody else. That flesh gets your attention. It gets you. Wow. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Please look at somebody and say, it's about to get very deep. Look at somebody else and say, I'm really not kidding. It's about to get very deep. Verse 26. For this reason, God gave them over and abandoned. For what reason? They exchanged the truth of God for a lie and started worshiping the creature rather than the creator. God gave them over and abandoned them to vile affections and degrading passions for their women. Exchanged their natural function for an unnatural and abnormal one. They're women because they traded truth for a lie. They serve the creature themselves rather than the creator. So the women, their natural use, change. God allowed it to happen. You want to worship yourself? Then it goes deep. Pastor Walt, why is God talking about the sexual in terms of the opposite of worshiping him? Well, let's, let's go even deeper. Look, I told you to look and say it was about to get deep. I already told you, already warned your neighbor two times. Verse 27. And the men also turned from natural relations with women and were set ablaze, burning out, consumed with lust from one another. Men committing shameful acts with men and suffering in their own bodies and personalities the inevitable consequences and penalty of their wrongdoing and going astray, which was their fitting retribution. Women turning, men turning, no understanding. I will take a lie more so than the truth. It doesn't take all that prayer, Pastor. Well, I ain't got to be praying an hour a day or whatever. You trade the truth of God for a lie. I don't care what that preacher say coming back to Sunday afternoon service. Prayer and Bible study? They usually start prayer around 6.30. Some of them be up there praying before then. I'll get there when I think Bible study is going to start, maybe around quarter to seven or something like that, to please flesh, to please self. You don't understand God has created law. Whatever church you go to, when they say this is the time service starts, you be there. As a matter of fact, if the service starts at 11, you get there before 11. Let the time catch you there. Understand that God is a God of timing. He is a time-conscious God. Even though he is in eternity, he's given time for us. 
And so when it is set, that appointment is set, and he honors that appointment, and he will be there. It's no need for the Spirit of the Lord to be moving in here mightily. 2.30 p.m. Monday afternoons, no one is in here. Why would the Spirit of God and the angels just be in here just moving and working? What's going on? Nothing. God sets the appointed time. We are to meet him here and let him have his way. I'm going to get up and I'm going to pray 5 a.m. every morning. That is an appointed time. Don't do it and watch what happens. You're not faithful. You're pleasing self. Oh, goodness. I see the alarm, but I'm going to snooze. You're going to snooze on God? Father, I'm going to just snooze. I'll be there in 10 minutes. God said, you didn't say 510. You said five. And then you wonder why you go through so much. You wonder why. Because you're not a law-abiding citizen. Why is it that right where we are, the speed limit is 35 and not 55? Why did the Department of Transportation, why is it that they did that? Because there is a lot of business around this area. There are residential places in this area that is the safest, safest speed where you could stop if a little child dashes out or if a car is pulling out from businesses along this strip. When you understand, you don't mind obeying. We just hear laws. 35, well, I'm sorry, I'm late. I got that. <laughs> Looking for the cops. David, why do we look for the cops when God is already watching? We don't want to get a ticket, but we don't mind dishonoring God. How to get under standing verse 28 and so since they did not see fit to acknowledge God or approve of him or consider him worth the knowing I don't consider God worth the knowing I don't have to know you I know of you and that's good enough but because they did not consider God worth the the knowing, God gave them over to a base and condemned mind to do things not proper or decent, but loathsome. Loathsome means hated. Have you ever seen people do something and you're like, why in the world did they do that? What were they thinking? God gave them over. They didn't see fit to ignite. I don't have to know him. I give the altar call for salvation. Who is not saved? Come up. They sit there. I don't have to know God now. If you don't worship him, you're going to worship flesh. The number one reason why people don't want to get saved is they are not finished doing their sin stuff. The number one thing that I hear people say, Dr. Hudson, when I say, why won't you get saved? The number one thing I hear, four words, I am not ready. As if you can get ready to come to Jesus. Let me tell you how silly that notion is. I'm not ready to get saved. And I, like, I'm just crazy. I say, okay, what do you mean by that? Well, there's some things I'm still doing. So in other words, you have to stop doing some things before you come to Jesus. Yeah. Okay, you want to know how stupid that is? I'm the one to tell you. I'll tell you how stupid that is. It is so very stupid because, number one, you can't quit those things until you come to Jesus. So how can you quit those things before you need Jesus to quit those things? You see how the devil just has your mind all twisty curled?
I'm so sick. Oh, my goodness. Oh, goodness, goodness. I don't know. I got a headache. I got a stomachache. I've been throwing up. But I tell you what, as soon as all this is over, I'm going straight to the emergency room. What? As soon as my headache goes and I stop vomiting, and as soon as I feel 100% better, I'm going to go straight to the emergency room. That's exactly what people are saying. I'm in sin, but as soon as I stop all this, then I'm coming to Jesus. <laughs> These brakes on my car are squealing and squeaking, and I pumped and pumped, and it still didn't stop. But I tell you what, as soon as it starts acting right, I'm going to go straight to the mechanic. <laughs> what? What? I'm going to come to Jesus once I'm straight and right and ready. Right. I'm not ready yet. You see how silly that is, baby. And you'll sit right there in your seats knowing good and well your life is sick. Your soul is sick. Your mind is sick. You can't even live for God if somebody paid you. Worry about this. Worry about that. You're just living a life of just no understanding. This is going on. Okay, Father, this is going on. What's the understanding of this? Get the understanding, but how do you get it? My, my. You see, when I was talking about the lesbians and the homosexuals, people were like, see, I don't do that foolishness. But look at all the other stuff. Where you at? Uh -huh. Oh, this word is for everybody. Hey, y'all are funny to my spirit. Now, the word of God continues in verse 29. Until they were filled. Verse 28 says, God gave them over to a base and condemned mind to do things not proper, decent, but loathsome, hateful. Until they were filled, verse 29, permeated and saturated with every kind of unrighteousness. Because I don't understand? Because I, I didn't acknowledge you and worship you and glorify and honor you as God, but would rather do that to my own self? They were filled with every kind of unrighteousness, iniquity, grasping and covetous greed and malice. They were full of envy and jealousy, murder, strife, deceit, and treachery. Ill will and cruel ways. You know people who are just cruel. They're just cruel. How can you be like that? And there's some people who are cruel and they'll smile about it. They'll joke about it. They're filled with that. But everybody wants to know, how does God allow such stuff to happen? God is like, you allowed it to happen. I gave you the way out. You didn't want to follow me. You wanted to follow yourself. Oh, my goodness. George Zimmerman should have been put under the jail. Where should you be right now? Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. That man know he killed. Yes, he does. Do you know exactly what happened? Do you know it was not self-defense? Were you there when he killed Trayvon Martin? Were you there? How do you know? If God decided to have mercy, whatever the king says goes. Mad and, and people on... On TV, talk about, ooh, it's going to be treacherous. Somebody's going, ooh, it's going to be chaos. It's for what? Oh, my goodness. Get an understanding. How many of you in here that say, oh, you know, that's just a shame. Is that, how many of you ask God, Father, what are you saying about this case? What is, what is your will for this? What are you saying, Father? Well, child, I tell you what, the way I understand it is that boy lean not to your own understanding. And some aren't leaning. They done just plopped down and got comfortable in their own understanding. 
Not just leaning, oh, just relaxed in it. <laughs> For what? To please yourself. Go on Facebook. Oh, everybody talk about it. Oh, da, 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 da. I went on Facebook and I said, it's just so simple. The prosecution was simply unable to not bring reasonable doubt to the jury. That's just it. It's not over, though, but that's just it. It's the judicial system. It's done. Father, be praised. Glory to your Lord. Don't you know the Bible says whatever is right, the Lord will pay? The Lord will pay. So give it all to God. Hallelujah. They were secret backbiters because you're a coward. Talking about somebody behind their back. You don't want them helped. You want them hurt. If you're going to talk about somebody, talk about somebody to them. Let me help you. When this son right here acts crazy, why in the world am I going to call Mother Jones and talk about him? When I get on his behind, just one-to-one. -one. I have a one-on-one -on -one ministry. Why are you talking about somebody? Go help them. Because you don't have love. You don't want to see anyone bettered. You call one, I just heard the Holy Spirit say this. I just heard somebody literally talking about somebody on the phone, and they hung up and said, no, nah, they ain't, they ain't get the response I wanted. So they called somebody else who didn't go be like, child, I know you got to be lying to me. Shut your mouth. Know that. See, people like those types of responses when they gossiping. Sweetheart, you know how they do. Please hang up this phone because I know you ain't telling me the truth. See, people like talking. When you talk to somebody, uh-huh, oh, they did. Oh, oh well. Oh, foot. They ain't making it juicy enough for me. I, I literally heard somebody hang up and call somebody else who they know is stupid like that. <laughs> Secret backbiters and gossipers. Verse 30 says what? Slanderers, hateful to, and hating God. Woo, I don't hate God. Prove it. Remember, hate is an action. It is not a feeling. Full of insolence, arrogance, and boasting. Inventors of of new forms of evil. Old forms ain't good enough. Got new evil coming out. Coming soon to a life near you. Evil. New. Upgraded. Version 601.0.2. Goodness gracious. People inventing evil. You want to know why it needs to be invented? Mm -mm 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 -mm. Invention and creation are two totally different things. God is the creator. He has already created. So you have to take what is created, parts of that, to invent. People can't create, but they can invent because God has already created do you know every single thing that you see, the, 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 the metals, the, 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 the plastics, the cloth, everything, everything came from God. Man has to take from raw materials and to make all these things. There's nothing on this earth that just came out of just thin air. Everything God created and man got wisdom and knowledge how to make all this stuff that you see. Even the cotton in your clothes, God created the animals. Oh, there's not one thing that you will ever find that did not come from what was created. It was invented from what he created. So people invent evil from stuff that God has already created. Disobedient and undutiful to parents. The Bible says that's why children die early. Because you don't obey parents. 
That's why we have little caskets. That's why people die as teenagers and stuff. They're not obedient. Not all of them. It's not true for all. But there are some who simply die because they are disobedient to parents. Now, Pastor Walt, where does all this negative stuff that you talked about lead to? Leads right back to the first scripture. I just read that scripture first. We had 30. Now we're going to 31. They, remember I said, who were they? All these people that we just talked about, how they were in their mind, how they were in their heart and their spirit. They were without understanding, consciousness, faithless, heartless, and loveless, and merciless. But Pastor Wall, I don't want none of this foolishness. So please tell me, how do I get understanding? Thank you for asking, kind sir. Thank you for asking, dear lady. We're going to go to 2 Timothy 3.15. And we're almost finished. The word of the Lord says, And how from your childhood you have had a knowledge of and been acquainted with the sacred writings. This is Paul writing his second letter to his spiritual son, Timothy. Say, you've been equated with the sacred writings, word of God, which are able to instruct you and give you what? The understanding for salvation, which comes through, how do you get understanding through what? Faith. Faith. In Christ Jesus, through the leaning of the entire human personality, on God in Christ Jesus in absolute trust and confidence in his power, wisdom, and goodness. Understanding can only come through faith. If you're taking notes, write it down. If you don't have faith, you'll never understand. Do you want to know why? Every single thing you have to understand, you're going to have to believe the one who's giving you the understanding. If you go to school to be an electrician and they teach you how electricity works, you're going to have to put full faith in them or else you'll never understand. You're going to have to believe every single thing they say. Go to school to be a cook. They tell you these dry beans, you're going to have to soak them for a couple hours. If you don't believe that, you're going to mess up. You, in order to understand, you have to have faith in what is being said. You've got to have faith. You'll never get understanding without faith. Let's go to Philemon, our last scripture. Philemon 1, 6. The Bible says, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. And if you remember Romans 1, 31, it says they were without understanding, consciousness, and faithless. Please remember that. Philemon 1, 6. Somebody said, ooh, I never even read this book. Forgot it was in the Bible. And I pray that a participation in and sharing of your what? Faith may produce and promote full recognition and appreciation. And what else? Without faith, there is never understanding, ever. And precise knowledge of every good thing that is ours in our identification with Christ Jesus and unto his glory. You have to participate in and share your faith. And it will promote and produce full recognition and appreciation and understanding. Without faith, you'll never get understanding. How do you get understanding? You have to have faith in God's word. I feel a few people in here wanting me to break it down. I'm two steps ahead of you. Father, this is the situation that I'm going through. The father says, just sit. Do nothing. I'm handling it. My understanding before I came to you is I'm going to have to do something because this is, this is, this is too much. I got to say something. I got to do something. I need to slap somebody. I need to kick somebody. I need to call somebody. I need God said, sit, don't do a thing. I've got it. So therefore, I got the understanding that he's handling it. 
You'll never understand that he's handling it if you don't have faith in him that he can handle it. The only way to get understanding is 100% faith in God. I understand you're taking care of everything. Now, that's what I understand. That's what I get out of it. I've been praying, Pastor Wall, and praying and praying and praying, and God isn't saying anything. Good. Good. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I need to hear God say something. I got to hear his word. Good. You got it. Where's your Bible? Take it off the shelf. Blow off the dust. (laughs) Open it up and read it. (laughs) You lazy self. No, Pastor, I call for you to give me the word. Go online, orangebergchurch.com. Look at all the messages. Free. Look at them. I guarantee anyone you pick, you'll get an answer out of it. I promise you. Oh, Pastor, you won't just tell me? See, you're the type of student that always want to sit by the smart child so you can look on their tests and cheat. Get it for yourself. You'll never understand if you cheat. You'll have the right answers, but you'll never know how to get it yourself. Never know. Hallelujah. I encourage everyone here, please, please, Go to God for your understanding. Don't think you have it. You don't. I don't think I have it. I don't even think I have it. I know I don't have it. I don't even think, oh, I, psh, mm-mm, that's dangerous. It's very clear, lean not. How in the world can you misinterpret that? Don't lean, lean not, lean not, don't lean, don't do it. Don't lean to your own understanding. Not even towards it. Don't lean to it. The Bible says, stand. Therefore, having your loins skirted about with two feet, sharp preparation of the gospel of peace, helmet of salvation, breastplate of righteousness, shield of faith, sword of the spirit. Don't lean, stand. Look at somebody say, don't lean. Don't lean. Stand. stand. Hallelujah. When you stand, literally standing, under the almighty God. What does that mean? When I stand under God, I understand. When I stand under, I understand. If you stand in under your own self, what kind of foolishness is that? How can you stand under yourself? You cannot, but when I stand, Having done all to stand, the Bible says to do what? Stand. And when you stand under Almighty God, under meaning I humble myself to you, you are El Elyon, which the Hebrew says that is the most high God. So you're most high. I humble myself is most low. I understand. I, under God, stand. I understand. And for me to stand under God means I have all faith in him. No faith in me. No faith in my knowledge and wisdom. This earthly wisdom. This earthly understanding. No, but God, I, under you, stand. So I understand. Thank you, Lord. I stand under. If you stand under, you will always understand. I'm encouraging you to stand under God. Trust me when I tell you, if you stand under devils, you will understand only on the level of demonic activity and ill will and crime. What is crime? Disobedience to law. What is sin? Crime. We call it sin. The world calls it crime because you disobeyed law. It is a crime to disobey the law of God. Hallelujah. The centurion asked Jesus, 
Will you heal my servant? Jesus said, I will come. Centurion says, no, I am under authority. I tell that man, go, he goes. I tell that man, come, he comes. Because he was in that army. He was a centurion. He was an officer in the army. So he understood that I am under authority, and I know the things that you do, Jesus, you're under authority. That's how you can speak it, and it happens. Speak the word only, and my servant will be healed. Because he understood, what did he have? Faith. I understand. Jesus turned to his disciples and said, I have not seen so great a faith in all of Israel. Why is it faith? Because he understands that I understand. I stand under the authority of my father. Jesus never claimed to have done any miracle. Not once in the Bible. He said the father does the works. Because all I do is understand. I just stand under. You want God to use you, stand under. When you stand under God, that means I'm doing what you're saying to do. I'm spending that time with you. I I am yours. I'm not my own. What does it mean to give your life to God? The same thing it means to give $100 to someone. You no longer have it. It is theirs. They can spend it. They can tear it up. They can burn it. They can try to smoke it. It's theirs. You don't have it. When you give your life to God, what does that mean? I don't have it. I can't do a thing with it anymore because I don't have it. What do we do? We give our life to God and we take some of it back, take this part back. We mess it up. Oh, God, look at my life. Look what's happening. You took it from me and messed it up. So now I have to fix that and then do what I was going to do for in the first place. And now I'm going to leave you here in this season of a merry-go-round until you learn your lesson. Seems like as soon as I get a little piece of money, it goes. Seems like as soon as I, I get one step up, I'm knocked down two steps because God said you don't stand under me. You get a little extra piece of money and you head it to the store. That isn't what I said to do with that. You didn't even ask me in all thy ways. Acknowledge him. You didn't acknowledge me. Get understanding, get understanding, and then pray accordingly. Amen? Amen. If you will, bow your heads, everyone. And I want you to look at your life. Let this message be, let this message be a mirror. Let this message be a stethoscope. Let this message be a syringe to get arterial blood gases from you so that you will be able to see how much oxygen is in your blood. Do, do, it, do I have the iron that I need? Do I have the joy that I need? Do I have the faithfulness that I need? What is in my blood? What's going on in my spiritual DNA? Check my vital signs, Lord, the things that are vital, what is needed for me to live. Let this message check you out. What is the condition? What are your symptoms? What are the symptoms in your life? This message has given you the diagnosis. You don't understand. You'd rather worship yourself than God. You will never, ever, 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 ever understand without faith. That's the only way to get it. Children understand. When they understand one plus one equals two, they only understand it because... They had faith that what the teacher said is truth. I understand addition. I understand trigonomy. Can't even say the word. 
I understand calculus. Because somebody told me this is what it is. God, if you tell me, I'll understand. All you have to do is tell me, and I will understand. Because my understanding will be whatever you say, this is truth. And that's all I understand. That's all I need to understand. And my understanding gives me this faith. I have this faith in you to understand. If you're here and you're not saved, you haven't given God your life. Maybe years ago you did. But you say, Pastor Wall, I haven't been living for God. Over half this year is gone. And Pastor Wall, to be honest with you, I don't know not even one soul that has come to the Lord because of my life. I can't. I can't even think of somebody that I just humble myself to God and just let God use me to deliver them and bring them out of stuff. Half the year is gone, and I don't know a thing that I have done for God except come to church, try to do right by people. I won't be going out there doing all these sexual sins and stuff. That's a reasonable service, the Bible says. Instead of saying, Pastor Wall, say to God, Father, I haven't been living for you. I haven't been doing your will. Oh, Lord, my Father. <sighs> I, need to, I need to come back. Or if you've never gotten saved, I need to get saved. Saved, what does the word saved mean? It means you are literally saved. It's just like the lifeguard saved someone from drowning. It's the same exact word to be saved from damnation, from hellfire, the lake of fire. It's all about you, Lord. It's not about us. If you're not saved, if you're here, if you're watching us live or recorded or listening, this is your opportunity. The opportune time that God is calling you to come, please come. If there's someone here and you're not saved, don't think about the person next to you or what people in general will think about you. Who cares? Understand that God's way is you come to him and he will give you everything you need. Thank you. If you're here and you're not saved and you say, Pastor Wall, I want to be saved. I want you to come up now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Anyone else? God is calling you. He's calling you. Thank you, Jesus. You're so perfect. So lovely. You're so glorious. God is real. He's so real. He's so real. He's so real. He's so real. Some of you, the enemy is fighting you in your mind. When the fight come up. When the fight. Don't let the devil defeat you. I can feel some of you just struggling, struggling. You know you want to come up and you feel that fight because the devil doesn't want you 
to be on God's side. He doesn't want you to stand under God. He wants you to remain standing under him so he can direct you. Jesus is coming soon. When Jesus returns, what will be your fate? He could return before we leave this service easily. He's calling for you. Will you come? Or will you be, as we read earlier, somebody who knows him as God but will not honor him, will not glorify him, but will reject him? He's saying, come. You can say, yes, Lord, and come up. And again, don't worry about people. Not one person in here has any right to judge another, not one. In this church, the Feast of the Lord, you will not be judged not in here. No, 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 no. This is the place where you come. You go to the hospital and you sick. Somebody judging you? No, they're just there to help you. That's what this place is all about, just so you will know. Be comforted. And I sense some of you, bless you, some of you are up here, and I don't mean that standing up here. You're, you're, you're up here in this service, and you're saying, you know, I, I, I'm saved, but I really, really fell off. Pastor, well, I heard you teach and preach. I have fallen way off. And what you need to be doing now is just repenting there in your seat, saying, I, just, I fell way off. I hear what you're saying. And I, oh, Father, I am so far behind. And you stay there and you, with your head bowed and your eyes closed. Say, Lord, I haven't done a thing for you this year. I can't even remember what I did for you last year that really increased your kingdom. Father, forgive me, please, in Jesus' name. If you're here and you're sitting and you say, I'm, I'm saved, but I'm slack, then repent right now. Repent right this very moment. For those listening and watching and for those who are standing up here now, for those who are seated, if you say, no, I really need to be saved, come now. We don't sneak to Jesus. You can't. You can't say, well, I'll just say the same prayer, but I'm going to sit right here. Jesus said, if you're ashamed to own me on the earth, I'll be ashamed to own you of my Father in heaven. You can live the rest of your life thinking you're saved, but you stand before Jesus. He said, no, you were ashamed of me. You would not stand. I said, stand. You would not stand. How many people are living now? And Jesus sees them as just simply being ashamed. I was in the Bahamas for my honeymoon and ministering to people. Uh, five people got saved, and I was ministering to somebody in the airport and just talking to them about life and living, and they were already saved. I said, so they just came back from France. I said, so what are you doing? What, what did you do? How did the Lord use you over there since you say? Oh, well, you know, I just basically just live the life. You know, I don't really just witness and all this. I said, what kind of foolishness is that? Show that to me in the word of God. Jesus said, compel them to come. It was a, of another expression, this, that, and other. It didn't matter to me. And then I began to prophesy to him. I, I began to use words of knowledge, telling him about himself. And he became glued. He told me his name, Marcus or something like that. I said, what is your name again? And he told me. I said, why is it that the letter J keeps coming up about you? What does J mean? He said, oh. He said, maybe it's my last name because my last name is Jenna. I said, God only did that to let you know this is really him. This is him. And I told him some other things. Of course, there was nowhere in the world I could know. And he repented in his own heart in his own heart that I've got to do more. He even said, I got to do more. I can't do this. He changed. I said that to say this. God wants us to change. Drug dealers, they're out there getting theirs. Gang, gang bangers, they're out there recruiting, getting theirs. What are Christians doing? Not a thing. 
I've had people to tell me, you know what? I have not had one person to witness to me it since I can remember. They don't know if I'm saved or not. How many of you right here in Orangeburg, when's the last time somebody witnessed to you, ask you if you're saved, if they care enough about you? People don't care about people anymore. You can go straight to hell and they wouldn't care. And they know you're going to hell. That's what I say. It's, 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 it's a difference talking about somebody and talking to them. Anyone else? Come up now. Please don't let this moment pass you by. Don't let embarrassment, which is an evil spirit, keep you in your seat. Come up. If there's another. If not, I will pray with these. Thank you, Jesus. Those who are up here now, lift your hands. Close your eyes. Bow your head. We do it as a sign of surrender. Our hands are lifted unto God as surrender. Closing our eyes so our focus is God and God alone. And bowing our head shows our reverence of the fact that the presence of God is here. So I reverence you, Lord. I respect you. The bow down head, not in sorrow, but in respect and honor. Even as the Eastern culture, the Japanese and Chinese, whenever they greet each other's presence, they bow. I honor your presence. We bow our heads. I honor your presence, Lord. And I want you to see yourself as God sees you right this very moment, as you're standing right before him. Jesus is there. The Holy Spirit is here with you. And I want those of you who are listening and watching and those who are up here in front of me right now, repeat these words, but know that it's coming from your heart. You're saying it directly to God. Everyone up here, those listening and watching, right now say, Father, I come before you right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I confess that I'm a sinner. I've done wrong and I need to be saved. Come into my life, Lord Jesus. Live your life through me. You died for me. God raised you from the dead. Raise me now. Lift me now out of my own self. I stand under God. His authority, his word, his instructions, his rulership. I don't own my life anymore. You own my life, Father. I give it all to you. Thank you for saving me. I will live only for you now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless you. Bless you. If you will, with your hands still lifted, your eyes closed, your head bowed. That was the introduction of who he is. Now, Father, I pray by Jesus Christ that when I lay hands on them, that you will give them a real experience with Jesus. A personal experience with Jesus right now. Let them receive. I speak to your spirits to be open to receive. Hunger now for Jesus. You will only get what you're hungry for. He who hungers and thirsts after righteousness shall be filled. Yes. Hunger now. I'm coming to lay hands and pray for you, but I want you to hunger. You have to hunger for God. We're going to pray for some more people who are seated, but right now for these, Father, touch them, touch them. Yes. Let them have a real experience Hallelujah. with Jesus. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Real experience, true experience. That's the presence of God, sir. That's the presence of God. Real experience. Ooh, with Jesus Christ, real experience. Oh, real experience with Jesus. So very real, so very real is this experience. 
with Jesus Christ himself flows. It's real, sweetheart. The experience with Jesus is real. Let them experience you in a very fresh and new way. That's just his power, sweetheart. That's just the power of God. That's just his presence. Ah, it's just his presence. His presence. His presence. Let them know Jesus in a very real way. Very real way. Such an experience in your heart. Oh, such, such experience. Very real experience with Jesus. Thank you for it, Lord. Bless you for it. You may return to your seats going forth. A new experience. There is a refreshing. There is a refreshing. I keep hearing it. I keep sensing it. There are some who want to be refreshed. They need a refreshing from the Lord. Please come now. Please come now. I used to be, I used to have, I need all the way back to what I used to have. I need it, I need it, I need it, I need it. Come if you're hungry. Come, 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 come. You can come down here as well. There's space down here. Come, there's a refreshing that's needed. Oh God, I bless and adore you. I thank you for your perfection. Oh, this refreshing comes to give you back what you've lost. You're being refreshed. It is fresh and it is new. God has no old refreshing. He doesn't give you the old. He gives you the new. You think the inventors of evil, new evil things, will outdo God? No way. Father, by Jesus Christ, these people have come hungry for you, not for shame, wall. You've given me what to give them. Whew. Give it to them freely. God's going to give it to you as hungry as you are. I promise you on the authority of God's word, lift your hands and receive now. Receive. Ah, for you, sir. <laughs> Flows. Oh, yes, just refreshing. Just ref ah! refreshing. Take it, take it. Whew. Refreshed. Refreshed all the way back. Ooh, ooh, more, 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 more. That's what your spirit's been saying to God. More, more, more. Take it in Jesus' name. Take it, sir, in Jesus' name. Take it, kind sir, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. God says, I know you. I have called you. I've given it to you. Come back to me wholeheartedly. Floats in your spirit. Refreshed. Re, 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 refreshed. All, all refreshed. All new. All new. All new. All new. Fire flows. Refresh, refresh, refresh. refresh. Woo. I heard God say, come to my bosom. Come close to me. Come close to me. Yes, God. Uh, flows all through you. Yes, you. Power of God for your life. Power, power, power. Much more power. Much more. The refreshing comes. Comes for you. Now, just receive. Take every bit of it. Whew. Just the flow. Power. Mercy, 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 mercy. Ooh. There's a teaching in you. Whew. Flows, flows. All, all, all. I hear God saying, filling up to overflowing. Overflow! Whew. Overflow, overflow. Every bit overflows. Ooh, for you as well. For you as well. More. No more sad days. God says, I fill you with joy. Whew. Filled. Filled. Filled, filled, refreshed, 
heart, spirit, mind, soul, body. Refreshing for you. Yes, it's all good. It's all good, nothing evil. Refreshed now for the glory of God. Refreshed now for the glory of God to be revealed in and through your life. Refreshing all through you. Now, refreshed, refreshed, restored, renewed. Shatarabansi. Refresh, restore you. Ooh, renewed. Refreshed, restored. Uh, Oh, renewed in his presence, stronger than ever before. Hatamata such host, mighty God, mighty, mighty changes. Refresh, restored, renew. Jesus' his name. Refresh, restored, renew. In Jesus' his name. Now he purposes. It for you. Oh, it's a refreshing. Ooh, all, all refresh, all restored. Tasando ko ba siya? Tadaman siya ko ho. Shanda laban di ako ba siya? Hey baha. Ah, ata da da da. Restore that sensitivity now. Refresh, restored, renewed in Jesus' name. Burst it through the heart in Jesus' name. Refresh, restored, renewed. Itachia. God touches you. God touches you. Ah, ah, ah. Part of intimacy. Intimacy with Him. Ah, He wants it. He wants it. You have such a heart, such a heart. Go there with Him. In Jesus' name. Flows in purpose. Flows, 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 flows. Your purpose. Your purpose is not ended. Uh 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 not ended. Flows by his power to bring forth your purpose. Yes, God. Ah, and it is so. Not forgotten. It's not over. Not over, not over, not over. Ooh, flows, 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 flows. I'm positioning you now. I'm positioning you now. Under my authority, in the place of authority. You be healed, whatever you are here. I command you be healed. Jesus' his name, you give God glory. Thank you, God. Come on, put your hands together and praise God. Praise for Jesus. I will, Lord. Promise you. Lord. Come up here, Reverend. Come up here. The presence of the Lord, just come. Just lift your hands here, just in His presence. Uh, he's ministering to you, just here in His presence. It's wonderful up here. Ah. Uh, yeah, the presence of God is up here. You can come up here, David. Presence of God is up. Shut up. It's just his yes. His presence is up here. So glorious. It's such a strong, beautiful presence of God. Sweet, sweet presence. I said it's a sweet presence of God. Sweet. Sweet. It's just sweet. It's just sweet in Him. It's just sweet. In him. So great. So great. Where is Punsi? Where is Punsi? Come, 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 come. I need him. Quickly, quickly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Come, Eddie. Come, 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 come. Just in the presence of God. Just, just in, just in the presence of God. In His presence. Just in His presence. Just in His presence. Just in. Just in. Just in. That's it. Just in His presence. Ah. 
How glorious. Touch, touch, touch. Just, just, just touch. Just, just a touch. Only, only a touch. Only, only, only a touch. There's so much in just one touch. His touch is so much. Come, come, come. Baran shake la basando do banshi ka. Rebe kataya tanan shio. Ya da shake Oh, yes, his presence is wonderful. So wonderful. So wonderful. So wonderful. Bless. Bless you. Zanzi sheta. Rose keda. Hands uplifted. Flows, 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 flows. Open up every area, heart, spirit, soul, mind, all. Flows, 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 flows. Woo! Bless you, bless you, bless you. Bless you, bless you. Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Jesus. Randolph, Randolph, come. Bless you, Father. Thank you, Lord. God, you're wonderful. Come, 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 come. Come, 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 come. come. Oh. Lift your hands. Oh. Like this here. Close your eyes. Father, let him receive of you. Mightily. Mightily. Floats, ah, his presence, his power. Release yourself into him. That's his presence, yes. You're just simply releasing yourself into him. No longer your presence, but his only. His only, sir. God's presence. Woo. That's it, that's it. Just release yourself into his presence. Don't think of anyone but God. Just stay here in his presence. Just stay here in his presence. Thank you. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. It's so wonderful. Oh. Bring the children, and you all come too. Bring them, help me, please. Bring them over here. Bashiata, call them. Marandashira. Just bring them up. Let me pray for the teachers first. Both jades. Come, come, come. Come, come, come. Jade, come, come, come. Lift your hands. Flows. Just all over. Yes, it's just, it's just here. Okay, come. It flows. It just flows all through you. It just flows. It's his presence. 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 Bring them up. And then take them back down. Up there. The presence of God be yours in Jesus' name. Woo. Come, sir. The presence of of God be yours in Jesus' name. Come here, sweetheart. Bless you. You're so precious. You're so precious. Presence of God be yours. Jesus' name. I hear the Lord saying, singing. He's anointing you to sing. Thank you. Come here, little deacon. Thank you, Father. Your presence in this body, in this temple. In Jesus' name. You're a special kind, sir. Thank you, Father God. Your presence here in this temple, pleasing you. Ooh. Pleasing you to be here. Pleasing you to be here. Hey, baby. I want to pray for you. The very presence of God here in this temple. Prolific speaker. Prolific speaker. 
prolific speaker. God uses this child. Thank you, Father. Bless you. Let's worship God. Let's worship Come, sweetheart. Yes, come. David, please come, 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 come. God, you're so wonderful. Up her up. God, you're so Marantia, you're so glorious. This is God's time. This is God's time. Hallelujah. Bless you, sweetheart. Lift your hands. God just wants to give you a refreshing. Uh, close your eyes. It's from him. Flows in Jesus' name. All oh, his presence. Filling you, filling you. Oh, filling. I hear God saying, restoring that joy. Restoring that joy. Oh, yes, 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 yes. All of it. Oh, he's restoring. He's restoring. He is restoring. He is restoring. Lift your hands. Close your eyes. All of it. Touch him. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, all the way. All. 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 That's it. Take it in. That's it. Just take it in. Woo. All basico. Just take it in. Woo. Even healing. Ah, touch. Woo. That's it. Take it. That's it. That's it. Just stand right there and take it in. Stand right there and take Bless you. I bless you. I bless you. Is there anyone else seated? You want me to pray with you? You can come now. Don't refuse anyone. Is there anyone? Any? Before I close. Thank you, Jesus. Bless you, Lord. Who's that? Who? Oh, okay. Yes, Lord. Bless you, Father. I thank you and I praise you for this dear gentleman. I bless you. I thank you, Father. From the crown of his head to the very soles of his feet, your presence, your love, and your power now be his. Now be his. I speak this body be healed. Glorify Jesus. Glorify Jesus. Thank you for his heart. Thank you for his dear heart. Thank you for his dear heart. Flows your might and your power. Thank you for touching him, mind, heart, body, soul, and spirit. And it is so in Jesus' name. Tell God, thank you. Say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, continue praising him. Bless Thank you, Lord. You may all return to your seats. Oh, come, sweetheart. Whew. Come, lift your hands. Fire of God be here. Oh, yes, that's his presence. Fire of God be here. Power of God goes through this spirit here now. Oh, God, I thank you and I bless you. Oh, 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 oh. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it, receive, that's it. Oh, all of this is for you. That's it, all of it is for you. So take it all in, every bit. Just take it all in. This is for you, this is his presence. He's loving, oh, God is loving on you now. Well, just take it, just take it, it's yours. All of it is yours. Yes, oh yes, oh yes, every bit of it, every bit of it is yours. Every bit, oh, don't worry about falling. You just receive, just take it in. This is yours. This is your time to receive. Whew. Now know his love like you've never known it before. In Jesus' name, that's it, take it in. That's it, that's it, receive, that's it. Ooh, strong, strong, strong. Whew. How strong it is, how strong it is. Bless you, 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 Lord. 
Let's praise God. Let's praise him. Let's praise him. Let's praise him. Mm. Uh. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Son, if you will, get the microphone. I know God wants to speak to a couple people at least. And just let the Lord use you. Hallelujah. Just let him use you. Mr. Aaron Long and Thank you, your Jesus. wife. Your wife, will you? The Holy Spirit told me a little earlier that there's a ministry, a mission ministry within the both of you. You can be seated. God and He's bless been you. dealing with you about this ministry. He said he's going to give you the help necessary to accomplish it. God has been dealing with you both. There's a strong ministry assignment in the both of you. And God said it shall come forth. He's going to give you the assistance you need to get it done. God says he's already started the process already. He said, but he wanted to let you know that it's confirmed that this is me. This is what I want you to do. He said, don't worry about the doubters and the haters, God says. He says, you walk boldly in this. He says, and watch. He said, as you walk in this, he says, I'm going to unfold it even more. He says, but he needs you to get out of the boat. He needs you to walk on the water. He said, because it's not going to be something that's never been seen and done before. So you don't have a, um, a somebody to follow after. God, this is new. He said, so you got to get out of the boat and walk. And God says, I've been giving you godly counsel. I've been blessing you with the wisdom to do it. He said, I just need you to make it happen in the name of Jesus Christ. And right now, I pray the favor of God upon you right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray the shield of protection around you right now in the name of Jesus Christ and the glory of God and the mighty anointing and the hundreds of thousands and millions of souls that will be delivered, saved, and set free as a result of the assignment in their lives in Jesus' name. Let's bless God for the ministry assignment in that ministry right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yo, oh, man, would you stand up for a second? Would you stand, stand up for a second? The Lord was so pleased with the decision you made earlier. He's already begun the transformation. He said he's been dealing with it. One thing about you, God says you are a thinker. You like to think. He says, you are a thinker. He said, and he's been dealing with you for a while about making changes. And you've been making a lot of little changes here and there. He says, what you just did today, it changed the very course of your life. He said, what you did today also added to your life as well. Hallelujah. I see a time where you went through a major trial and tribulation that could have cost you your life. He says, but God said he saved you just for this moment today. He says, stay with me. Stay with me. And God says, miracles will follow. God says, continue to stay with me. This is also a miracle row right here. There's a this, this whole row right here is going gonna, is gonna to be burst with miracles. Both you two, God wants you to be, he says, stay focused on me, keep looking to me. But God says, he's going to show you guys some mighty things in the coming days. So keep your eyes open, watch him closely in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, man of God in the blue tie. God, God says, the hand of God is upon your life, man. He said, the hand of God is upon your life, and there's a word he's put in you. He says, he's touched you. He's touched your mouth with a word. He says, so be prepared to release when I tell you to speak. He says, say what I tell you to say. He says, even in unorthodox ways, even in uh, avenues, areas where um, it may not be popular, he says, go ahead and release what I tell you to release. He's put a mighty anointing on you, man. God has been, your hand, God has been in your life for a long, long time, brother. He says, God says, stop running. He says, stay focused on me. Go all the way, God says, go all all the way. Don't worry about man's approval. God says, look to me. There's a strong anointing on you, man. I want to touch, touch you right now. In Jesus' name, Lord God, the power of God that's in this man, Lord, the revelation you're going to give him of the word of God. Hallelujah, Lord God. The faith that you're strengthening right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord God, I add my faith to his and I confirm what you have spoken, God. I pray that he has the boldness to release what you tell him to release. And I thank you for the help that's coming his way. In Jesus' name. Come on, who loves him. Bless God for the gift in him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.